What's up everyone? Today we are taking a look at the Zero One. This is a class one cargo bike and we got a lot to say about it. At $37.99, Zero One offers this bike in two different colorways. This is the Shio Gray, which is a very nice, smooth, matte, light gray. The Shimano Steps E6100 mid-drive motor, paired with a 504 watt removable battery, and a Shimano Inter 5E internal shifting hub, all brought together with the smooth and quiet favored Gates CDX belt drive. Now the Cerro One is a cargo bike, something that should be on your radar for a urban city commuter bike because it can carry things. It is rated to hold 300 pounds with the rider weight included. So that makes each rack capable of carrying about 50 to 55 pounds each on their own, uh, depending on rider weight, of course. The Zero One has many accessory options. The Loden cargo racks are made specifically for Zero, and those include three different options of aluminum baskets to mount on both the front or the rear racks, um, expanding your cargo capacity. The Shimano E6100 mid-drive motor boosts your pedaling power up to 20 miles per hour. So this is, as I mentioned before, a class one e-bike. That mid-drive motor paired with the 504 watt hour battery in economy mode can deliver a 105 mile range. On the Zero One, we see a relatively clean and simple cockpit. There aren't cables and wires everywhere. The Shimano hydraulic disc brakes are simple and clean and that Shimano Inter 5E internal shifting hub has just a simple grip shift here to lock through your five gears. That internal hub is a very, very nice feature for a city bike paired with the Gates belt drive especially, is it's no fuss, no mess, simple. You don't have a derailleur hanging down. You don't have a chain getting greasy and dirty, rubbing on the inside of your pants. It's a clean, simple system. And even down to your shifter is just clean and simple, which is nice for navigating through streets and parking at bike racks. It's just one less thing to hook on the Shimano display is very easy to read and navigate. It has a simple on off power button as well as a on off button for the attached LED lights. To navigate not only through the menu on the display, but to also switch between your modes with that motor, the left hand controller is only a three button controller, very simple and it's clean and kind of disappears into the handlebar. Now on the topic of wheel size and that unique overall design of the bike, it offers two major benefits to you as the rider. On the front, with the smaller wheel, you are able to have a lower basket, creating for more room to stack things up without impeding the rider's viewpoint. So as you are riding and you have things up front, you don't have to worry about not being able to see over them. In addition, with that front design, the front wheel turn separately from the basket. So that keeps those things in place as you ride the bike around, helping to keep them more stable and keep that balance in the geometry to be more expected for you with that weight up there as you ride around. In addition, that mixed wheel size and the offering of a step through frame, you're able to maintain a lower center of gravity with that 26 inch rear wheel behind you and kind of sink more into it. So as mentioned, we elected for the Yep Maxi Seat Child Carrier. So we're gonna hop over to Drew, one of our testers who has more of a mountain biker perspective, but to hear what that's been like as a dad to be riding around with his child on the bike with him and to be using this as his commuter over the last few weeks. So, you know, obviously I've been testing, riding, racing, primarily mountain bikes for over 10 years. So this is definitely outside my normal zone of bikes. However, if it's got wheels, I'm gonna be testing it, right? And, and uh, with gas prices getting as crazy as they were and now having a little baby that I wanted to take out with me, um, it just seemed like a great bike for me to steal from you guys. And I gotta say, I had a blast on this bike, you know, like it's kind of got a weird look, but it's also kind of cool. Like it draws attention when we pull up to like the food cart lots or, 
you're just riding it around. Um, I really liked a lot of the features about this bike. There was a couple of things I personally had some issues with. So one of the things that I think some people might like and could be an issue at the same time for someone like myself is this very adjustable front end. You know, like as you can see, like this is just, there's a lot of contraptions, there's a lot of length, which to me, you know, being an aggressive mountain biker means there's a lot of flex. There's a lot of potential areas for weak points and movement. Um, again, this is like an urban cruiser bike. So I don't know if people are gonna be really wrenching on the bars, like standing up and pedaling on this bike is very weird because of the geometry and how, you know, big that space is and how small that front wheel is. So it's not a bike you're gonna be riding aggressively, but it was still something that was in my mind. Yeah. Didn't have too many problems other than that. The second kind of criticism I had was uh, the stiffness of the ride overall. I thought that it was, you know, like on some of our streets that are chip sealed where there's like cracks in the, you know, the asphalt or pavement, um, concrete, whatever type of surface it might be. Wherever there was cracks in the road, um, I noticed that it was it was pretty jarring and a little bit rough. Um, tire pressure kind of helped mitigate that. The load on the bike kind of helped change a little bit, but um, that was something that was still worth mentioning. So yeah, if you live in an area that has a lot of rough roads with lots of cracks or joints, um, you know, might be something worth considering. But when you get this on a bike path or smooth, newly paved roads, I mean, it just floats like a cloud. Uh, and I really like it. So the list of things I like about this bike is obviously a lot greater than um, you know some of the things I don't love about it. One of which is this load carrying capacity up front. This big basket with a liner is awesome. Um, it was honestly, I stole this bike from these guys and I have hardly driven my van to work ever since. Um, you know, I've got a pretty short commute. I think I've put like a hundred miles on this bike, just back and forth, back and forth. And then what's cool is I get home you know, I can take my lunch, I can take my laptop, camera gear. Um, I mean, you know, today we were doing some work at the office, so I threw in a drill and some, uh, some other tools. All of that stuff just stays in there very nicely. I really like it. Um, also, what's very cool is that you've got the ability to carry even more out back. Having the baby seat for me is important as I've got, you know, a little tiny uh, toddler at home. But I love how quick and easy it is to remove this oh, yeah. baby seat. Should I do that right now? Yeah. I love the fact that I can just undo that little safety latch around the seat post and within a second or two, like I've got this seat loosened up and I can have it off the rack and you're in performance mode, right? You're ready to race now. Um, so that is something that, that I think is really neat and super cool. Putting it back on is also just as easy. So um, to me, like, Again, like I said, being a new dad and I want to take my kid out on the bike whenever I can. Cinch that back down. And you can kind of curate how that. close it is too. So that exactly. some options, flexibility. Yeah, so I can, you know, if I want to have panniers on here and, and carry more luggage, um, if I want to strap something on behind the baby seat, you know, if, like towels if we're going to the pool or the lake, all that stuff is very customizable and really cool and are things I really like about the bike. The ergonomic grips, super comfortable. The grip shift is easy to use. The big display on the bar is easy to use. I really like the light integration, yeah. you know, headlight, tail light, safety is really important, especially you got the little one on back. There's a lot of really good stuff about this bike um, and it is sturdy, like it, it is a robust machine. Yeah. So um, all in all, like I said, I've hardly driven my vehicle ever since I got it. Whether I'm using it for work or I get home and I want to take the baby somewhere. My wife even loves it with the low step over height. You know, she's not a, an avid cyclist, but she's now like, oh, let's go to dinner. And instead of driving there, let's take the bikes, you yeah. know, and, and she's stoked to pedal and get over there. Brakes are very strong. Like they grab, they work well, but the Schwalbe tires offer a lot of grip. Um, they roll smoothly and fast. So whether I'm cornering hard, right? I'm, I'm trying to push the limits on these bike paths and really trying to lean this bike over and have fun with it. Um, but I mean, it brakes well. It's got big, massive brake rotors, which is a really smart move. Like the people that were specking this thing were thinking ahead. Uh, you know, if you've got weight, if you've got speed, you're moving, you want a brake that's gonna stop you, this will do that. Um, 
The ergonomics of the bike for the most part are pretty solid. Again, you can adjust it, which eh, comes with some drawbacks, but I like the fact that based on your body height position, how aggressive or upright you wanna be, you can change that. The big flat, you know, ergon paddle grips make it super comfortable. It's like you're just lounging. You don't have to have a sore wrist or anything like that. Um, comfy seat, the low step over. So if you've got, you know, a, a dress on or fancy clothes, you're a shorter, you know, person you wanna ride. Those are all nice things. Um, it's It's got pretty good stability, right? It's not like the big long cargo bikes and, and like this weird dis, jointed handling feel like you get on this and it handles like a bike it's snappy it's fast yeah, it's, it's good a, it's a quick learning curve too yes some of those longer bikes it kind of takes a minute to yeah. figure out just even how to turn yeah. this one it was just like oh okay if that's exactly where it's at yeah ab absolutely so i i think that's a really cool part about this bike um, obviously the load carrying you know like the weight carrying ca capabilities are a little lower than some of those dedicated cargo bikes but you know, at the same time, like I'm not delivering hundreds of pounds of, you know, wheat yeah. and barley, you know, like I'm not a baker so that I don't need that. You know, if I can put my bag and computers or my, my day trip essentials, that's all I need. And um, to me, you know, I think it, it's a little bit stiff of a ride. And I think maybe the square tubing might have something to do with it. I mean, it's like, it's just, it is a very stiff frame and it's a stiff ride on bumpy or choppy roads. Um, and that would be kind of a takeaway. I love the belt drive. Quiet. It's dead silent. Um, it's clean. You don't have to lube it. Awesome. Like there's a lot of really cool things about yeah. this bike. Well, now that we've heard from Drew about his experience on this bike, let's hop over and go for an on-bike experience. So as always, we like to start out just pedaling with it off so you can see what it's like to pedal around. Um, that belt drive is absolutely silent and honestly with no power at all. Um, I'm in the third gear of the five. This is super simple to cruise around and really nice. Now this is a Shimano E6100 motor. So when you turn it on, you can't have any pressure on the crank pedals. And once it's good to go, you can put your feet on there. And again, off from a stop, pedals super simply, gets up to speed totally fine. In fact, can even shift all the way into the most difficult gear and it pedals very nicely. So if you were to run out of power on this bike and you still had to get home, it's gonna get you there. It doesn't feel that heavy and it rolls very smoothly. I'm doing 12 miles an hour on flat ground, no big deal. Well, let's get this up into the eco mode. Just a little bit of assist, going up a slight incline here, 11 miles an hour, again in that third gear, that Shimano motor, even in eco mode, applies plenty of power to get you going easily around town. Up on into normal, taking that 12 miles an hour. Now I'm over spinning on my cadence apply a little bit of pressure. Those hydraulic brakes feel really good braking. Now in normal mode, I'm in the fourth gear again of the five on flat ground here, 16 miles an hour, hardest resistance, gear five. We're at 17 miles an hour almost here. There we go, 17, feels very good. Those Ergon paddle grips are very comfortable on the hands and take you on something a little bit chattery here. So this is an all aluminum frame and you can tell on those bumps, you can kind of feel a lot of them. but it doesn't hurt you. It's just, you, you know, might want to stand up a little bit to give a little suspension. So this is the normal mode. Let's go ahead and see what it's like in high. Got a little stop sign here. All right, in high mode, gets up to speed very quickly. 
I'm gonna go all the way into that hardest gear. This is a class one motor, so it'll apply pedal assist power up to 20 miles an hour. And right now we're hovering just shy of 20 and 19 and a half. And I got to a stop sign before I can even get up to speed. So as I said, those Ergon grips paired with that Ergon saddle, very comfortable for the rider. I feel like you have really good, you know, smooth connecting platform for your hands. And the saddle from Ergon is very ergonomic and very comfortable. Now, when talking about power delivery, this Shimano motor is a great platform. However, I would not call this the king of the hill. This is a very much so a round town cruiser with some rollers here and there. When it comes to those steeper grades, currently I'm in the high and I'm pedaling, I'm gonna make it up it. And when you drop it down from high into eco, you really feel yourself having to work to make those hills. So let's get up to speed and do a little brake test here. It has Shimano hydraulic disc brakes, front and rear. And I'm at 20 miles an hour. Got like a little 10 foot stretch of pavement here. Didn't break ground. It's able to come to a complete stop in about 12 feet. I mean, I could grab more brakes and slide, but they have a really good feel, help bring you to a stop very easily. One thing that's cool that I mentioned is that it has a telescoping stem. So that means if you are a taller rider or maybe you have a bunch of stuff in that front basket, you can actually, when you're stopped on the ground, release that, get your stem up higher, close down that release now your handlebar platform's up higher and it's more comfortable for the rider position. Like I said, that display is extremely easy to read, whether the sun's hitting it or in the dark. And it has a few menus. So you can select through and see how much, what the time is, what your average speed's been for that ride, what your max speed was, what your cadence is at the current moment of pedaling, what your overall distance has been, the odometer is on the bike, and what your range is for that current mode. My favorite menu is the range for all the modes, so I know if I need to be switching between the modes to be more efficient to make sure I get home. Again, in that economy mode, 105 mile range. We haven't charged this bike in a few days and have put a lot of miles on it, and it has yet to die on us. The Gate CDX belt drive it is so quiet, I can't even hear it over the slight, quiet whine of the motor. It's almost as though nothing's attached. It's so silent. I'm used to chains on mountain bikes that are just loud and ratchety and get all grimy and gross. So the belt drive is very, very nice. And one of the features I like most about this bike is the fact that it is a step through and has a center stand. And there you go. Overall, the Zero One is a very great bike. It has been built very well. It has a very good component spec. It has not let us down and we've really enjoyed riding it. Again, our overall riding experience with the Zero One has been great. Having that cargo capacity and being able to run our errands on it has made this the desirable city urban commuter bike for each one of us. It's so nice to be able to take your bags off of your shoulders, throw them in the rack, or have no bags on you and run down to the market to get some groceries. Having that capacity just on hand, ready to go, ultimately, in our opinion, makes it one of the better options for a city commuter bike. All in all, who do we think this bike is for? We think it is for someone who is looking to have a vehicle replacement. Cargo bikes are one of the better vehicle substitute bicycles. They have the cargo capacity, they have the weight capacity, they are designed for navigating the streets, 
This model comes with lights front and rear. It has an Avis bike lock attached to it. All the little things that you need to just turn and burn and be ready to go to the market, to the store, run to Target, whatever you need to do you are ready with this bike and it has a lot of flexibility to fit a large variety of riders. I, at six feet tall, can set it up one way and with a couple quick changes, have it ready for my partner who is 5'4". If you're interested in a Zero One, be sure to check around your local bike shops and see if there's any distributors close by. If so, tell them we sent you and head down for a test ride. We're sure that you'll have a great time. Again, this is a very ergonomically designed bike. It's very comfortable, very intuitive, and it's easy and quick to just hop on and feel settled in. We hope you enjoyed this review on the Zero One. It's a very awesome bike, something that you should definitely put on your radar. If you get one, let us know. And if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below in the comment section. We'll do our best to answer. Well, thanks again. We'll see you in the next one.